he he loved to lead and he was one of those guys they're guys who like kind of go for it in the lead and when you pass them they're like oh well i put it out there and then they're done lowey was never like that he would he would always fight back as we start the race here all right they're off you can see garrett heath there in the brooksby singlet the yellow on the inside and then don cabral in the tracksmith uniform eric jenkins in there too and that's heron lagat yep heron lagat who ran the steeple earlier interesting to see him back here Lowey Lang out front, and Pat Tiernan in this race. It's Daniel Herrera, who I believe is going to be a rabbit. And Dustin Nading, a University of Washington, formerly Western Oregon athlete. I say that because, uh, well, I say that you know, you know Lowey Lang because you had some fierce battles with him in college over and over and over again. <laughs> I did, yeah. Those were always fun to watch. Uh, yeah, my, my all-time memory of Lowey, well, I have a couple of memories. One, him, so they used to, him and uh, Steven Samba, they used, used to do this thing where they'd, they'd go out at like a moderate pace and then about a third of the way through the race they would just start absolutely ripping until no one was with them anymore. And the first time they did that was uh, at Pac 10s and I just remember we came, went out at like 4.30 and then he just, they just start going and going and I'm absolutely hanging on for dear life and I just hear James Lee's quiet voice go, 61 Lowey, pick it up. And I and that that broke me. That sentence right there broke me. Um, All right. Well, Daniel Herrera on the front, and he brought them through in about 61.7. So for the pack, 62 seconds. 61, Daniel. Don't pick it up. <laughs> don't don't pick it up just yet. The Olympic standard for this event, 13.13.5. So that will be the target for some of these athletes in this race, and that's 63 fives, and the men's. Olympic trials standard, 1325, that's 64 fours. So they're out pretty well right now. I think more folks are going to be interested in the trial standard than the, than the Olympic standard. I think the race would probably be better served to come through at that pace as opposed to going, going big, but that's just one man's opinion. I'm curious to see what Pat Tiernan does here this evening because he's looked very fit in the weeks leading up to this he rabbited the sound running track meet 10,000 meters through 5k and 1345 looking extremely smooth and then PR'd in the 1500 at the Portland Track Festival running 338 and he's the Australian national record holder in the 10k running 27 23 in December so he's sitting on a pile of fitness right now. Well, Pat's, he's, he's a really smooth runner, really strong. I think a lot of people remember him, him taking down Edward Cesarek in cross country. And he's really thrived moving out to Eugene, training with the Oregon Track Club. Um, I think, you know, getting into a, just a more professional setting. Obviously, the being at Villanova worked great in college. And, you know, Marcus O'Sullivan's a great coach. But sometimes kind of being around college athletes, being on their schedule mentally can be a little tough. Um, for a pro who's trying to kind of reach those next heights. So I think he's trained with Hassan Mead and Mark Rowland and Eugene has been really good for him. And we've seen here I, this, I don't want to be too critical of the, of the Pacers, but this is just not, this is not a fun way to run. They were out in 61 and then they, they backed off to, I feel like, a, like 64 high. And now they kind of clamped back down to maybe 62 high, 63. And I just kind of, for me, there's just a little too much yo-yoing going on or at this at this fast pace. So, I think uh, I think a few guys here who wanted a smooth ride are maybe going to end up burning some matches early on that they would have they would have liked to have saved for later in the race. But we'll see what happens. So they were they were out in 309 through 1200 meters. 3105 is the 1313 pace, the Olympic pace, Olympic standard pace. So. Uh, they're on that, but like you said, a tough way to do it. And we'll see how it affects them later on in this race. Daniel Herrera is still on the front here as they come up to 1,600 meters, and we'll see what the time on the clock says for that. And, and of course, I mean, some of these guys, if you guys want to run, thir you know, try to run 13.10, then this is, this is great. I just think, I think for this field, maybe, um, I, maybe I'm wrong. I would, just, I would be surprised if that many guys in this field felt they were ready to do that. 414 for the mile there, so right on 13.13.5 pace. Lowy Lang sticking on Daniel Herrera and Don Cabral, extremely tough there, sitting in third place. So we're settling more into those 64s here, and I mean Herrera's got a little grimace on his face, but I think if we can stabilize in those 64 points 
for the rest of this field here for a few more laps, that, that'll really set us up for to have the most athletes succeed. Talking about toughness, they're as nice of a guy as Garrett Heath is. I don't know if I know a tougher runner on the planet. He can go to a place early on and stay there that's very dark. Garrett is a really tough guy. I mean, those years of cross-country skiing out in the, the, you know, the great northern wilderness in the dark in Minnesota. Although I would, I would probably put, uh, I think I'd probably put Shelby Houlihan as the toughest athlete I know. But Garrett's, Garrett's definitely up there as well. All right, they come through in about 519 through 2,000 meters. That so was a 66, so the pace slowing a little bit. And th this, is, uh, th this race will be interesting because you've got a guy like Tiernan, who's obviously very, very fit. And if he wanted to, I think he could make this race, make this race go. And you know, I think a lot of these guys would thank him for it, but he probably just wants to get in a race. He cares more about his clothes, his clothes, and his last K or what have you. Um, and so there's sort of a yeah a mismatch of, of desires here. So that I would imagine that sets things up well for Pat Tiernan towards the end of this race, and we'll see what he can do to close it out. But we've got a lot of time to go through to get there, and everybody is still in it at this point all the big names we've got Don Cabral up there hanging on Lowey Lalang Garrett Heath in third place Garrett Heath really wants this 1324 he's got to get under 1325 to get to the trials and that was nearly a 67 so they, they announced 66 eight over the loudspeaker here so they they can afford a couple laps like that but you start running three or four of them and you're asking for a, a big last mile. But I think uh, just from, from watching the runners in the first mile, I think a lot of guys were not, they were not in rhythm at that pace for whatever reason. And so I think they need some time to kind of gather themselves up here um, if they're going to make a push at the end. So we're probably headed for about 8.06, 8.07 at 3K, which if you can, which means you're going to need to run under 64s for your last 2K if you want to hit that trial standard. All right, Lowey Lalang still at the front. Don Cabral, Garrett Heath. The order has not changed. Eric Jenkins in there as well. Eric Jenkins ran 341 for 1,500 meters out at the New York City qualifier, the Trials of Miles event out there. Pat Tiernan looking sprightly right behind Eric Jenkins. He, the, that man always looks smooth, but he looks especially smooth today. I want to shout out, uh, one name we haven't mentioned is Seth Hirsch from the University of Wisconsin. He's in the all-white there, two spots behind Tiernan. He's, uh, he was a great high school runner. Uh, I want to say he must be a sophomore or a junior now. A, a guy who just uh, has the reputation of running hard all the time, being a true grinder. That last lap from start to start was 67 seconds. So Don Cabral goes to the front now to try and push this pace and keep him in range. Make sure that they have that 1325 still in, in their sights. And we were looking, I think, at about 809 there, 808, 809 at 3K. So uh, if you want to you know, run 1325, you're going to basically need to run 63s average from here on out, which uh, I, just, I don't think they're moving at that pace right now. And Garrett Heath, the man that wants this the most, right in the second position, ready to do the work when he needs to. Keep that pace in order. Mike Tate in the orange there on the back, uh, a Southern Utah, a former Southern Utah runner, I believe, uh, Canadian. 66.9 on that lap. So again, we're just, uh, I think the only guys who maybe have the, who maybe have it in the legs to push this pace forward, Tiernan and Jenkins, I'm not sure that, you know, they're not here to run a time, they're here to run a race. So I think there's, there's just gonna be some guys who kind of wish this pace had gone a little faster. So this could be on Garrett Heath's shoulders for the remainder of this race here, and he's going to need to go to a dark place to make this happen, keep grinding this out. Yep. And if you're Garrett, it's, it's hard because you're, you're seeing the times click by. You know you got to go, but you're not going to do yourself any favors if you kind of hit the front and try to go full gas. You're just going to tighten up, maybe around a fast 200, and then be flailing around. So you gotta, you got to go hard, but you got to go relaxed, and that's the name of the game in distance running. It's a very hard thing to do. But that's the task in front of him. 
and I want to know what Pat Tiernan is, is being tasked to do here by his coaches. I think he's tasked to win the race. That would be my guess. 65 seconds, so we're, we're clamping it down a little bit. We, there's still a lot of work to be done there. I mean, get, I think Garrett can, he can look, well, I don't know if he would look forward to the fact, but he can rely on the fact that I think Jenkins and Tiernan are going to have some moves to make, and when they do, he's just got to be ready to hop on. You can see that strain on Lowry Lelang's face, too, in fourth position there, trying to keep himself in this race. You want to talk about tough guys. He's an all-timer. Those just, we used, to, we used to joke that he'd call, call him the chomper. He'd just be chomping his teeth down the home straightaway, eating up the ground. Garrett Heath's still at the front right now. He's, he's going to have to make this race and get it under 13.25 if he's going to make it under 13.25. So this is all on Garrett Heath's shoulders as Pat Tiernan just goes up onto his outside shoulder. Not willing to help push the pace at the moment. So that was a K to go, 10.53. So he, they need 2.32, I believe, in the final, uh, if my math's right there, in the final K to run under 13.25. That's a, that's a tall, tall order. So they're about nine seconds outside of pace right now. They're about 10.53, and they needed 10.44 there. I mean, Tiernan looks like he might be able to run 2.32, but can anyone else go with him? Jenkins right now is the only one. Jenkins and Tiernan had a duel in December down at the Sound Running Track Meet 10K to the line. They each ran low 2720s, so we could see a, a remake of that finish here. Lowy, who it just looked like he was absolutely hurting, is now fighting to get around Mike Tate. That man, that man never gives up. Tiernan looking good. Jenkins not letting him go down the back stretch now. They've broken away from everybody else. It's a two-man race. And they're heading into 4,400 meters. And that looked like it was about a 60. So that was a 50, 59. 59. Oof. 59 seconds from start to start for Pat Tiernan, looking incredibly smooth there. And Eric Jenkins not letting him go. Tiernan really does just looks fantastic at this pace. If, if not for the massive gap he'd opened up you wouldn't be able to tell how fast he's running and here's the bell Tiernan at the front then Jenkins and can Tiernan get rid of Jenkins here or is Jenkins going to make a move 1222 at the bell and each of these guys in their head I think is rehearsing for, for later in the summer Tiernan for the Olympic Games Jenkins for the trials 59 seconds for the penultimate lap Pat Tiernan of the OTC, Gang Green coming up here to race in Portland, Oregon. He's trying to take a win for him. Jenkins still on him with 200 meters to go. That was a 58 second lap from start line to start line. And they're swinging around 150 to go now. From the overhead look, they didn't look like they were straining too much. But now they're pushing it. Who's gonna take this? Jenkins swings wide, tries to get around Pat Tiernan. Jenkins is getting an edge. I think Jenkins has got it. Let's see what that is on the clock. 13.20. 13.20. I think about probably a 2.27 point last K. Huge confidence booster for, for Jenkins, who really hasn't done very much outdoor season after having a really nice 10K in the winter. So that's, that's got to be a, a huge, uh, huge boost to his confidence coming, going into the trials. Eric Jenkins closing in 57.39 for that final lap. 13.20.8. Pat Tiernan closing in 57.9, running 13.20. And that's another win for Pete's group there. So right now we've got Pete's Dragons with two, the Bowerman Track Club with one win, the Beasts with one win, and the Hoka Aggies with one win as well as we head into the final event of the evening, the Wim Nike Women's 5,000.